In this lesson, we want to review applications of linear equations and look at some examples of age problems. So again, whenever we're working with an application problem that involves a linear equation in one variable, we can use our little six step procedure. So for solving a word problem, we have that we want to read the problem and again, determine the question or questions to be answered. Then we want to assign a variable to represent the unknown. With these problems, we're going to express other unknowns in terms of this variable. Then we're going to write an equation. And this is based on the situation given to us in our problem. And then we're going to solve the equation. Then we're going to write the answer in terms of the question or again, questions asked. And then lastly, we're going to check the answer using the words of the problem. We always want to make sure the answer is reasonable. So for age word problems, this is another extremely common type of word problem in algebra. This type of problem is generally going to give us the sum of the ages of family members, friends, or some group of associated people. And it's going to ask us to find their individual ages. Now it doesn't always set up this way, but that's the most common scenario. All right, so let's take a look at the first example. So we have that Albert, Jamie, and Jessica are siblings and have a combined age of 50 years. So Jessica is three times as old as Albert, but half as old as Jamie. How old is each sibling? So this is our main question here, right? How old is each sibling? So we need to find out how old is Jamie, how old is Albert, and how old is Jessica, okay? So we are only given the fact that they have a combined age of 50 years, and we've given some comparisons here. It tells us Jessica is three times as old as Albert, but half as old as Jamie. So to solve this, we know what we're trying to find. Let's assign a variable. Let's let x be equal to, since Jessica is involved in both comparisons, let's let x be equal to Jessica's age. Now, what can we say about Albert's age and what can we say about Jamie's age? Well, we're told here specifically that Jessica is three times as old as Albert. So if Jessica is three times as old as Albert, that means Albert is one third the age of Jessica. So then X, which is Jessica's age over three would be equal to Albert's age. Now, we're also told that she's half as old as Jamie. So if Jessica is half the age of Jamie, that means Jamie is two times as old as Jessica. So I can say then, two times X, again, X is Jessica's age, so two times that would be Jamie's age. Okay, so this is Jamie's age. Now, we have everything set up here, we have everything modeled. How do we get an equation going so we can get a solution? Well, essentially, we have a combined age of 50 years, so I can take Jessica's age, which is X, add that to Albert's age, which is X over three, and add that to Jamie's age, which is two X, and I can set that equal to 50 right, their combined age. So let's go ahead and set that up. So we would have x plus x over three plus two x is equal to 50. What I can do to clear this denominator is multiply everything by three. So I would have three x plus, if I multiply x over three by three, I would just have x and then plus two x times three is six x and this equals 50 times three is 150. Okay, so basically I just multiplied both sides of the equation by three. Again, so I can clear this denominator here. So now 3x plus x is 4x plus 6x is 10x. So you get 10x is equal to 150. Let's divide both sides of the equation by 10. We get that x is equal to 15. So if x was Jessica's age, that tells me that Jessica is 15 years old. So let's go back up. So again, x is 15, so Jessica is 15. And then we know that Albert is a third of the age of Jessica, right? It's 15 over three, which is five. And then Jamie is twice the age of Jessica, so it's two times 15 or 30. So to answer this question, we can say that Jessica is 15, comma, we'll say Albert is five, and we'll say Jamie is 30, okay? Now you can check this to make sure it makes sense. So again, Albert, Jamie, and Jessica are siblings and have a combined age of 50 years. So is 15 plus five plus 30, 50? Yes, 15 plus five is 20, 20 plus 30 is 50. So you're good to go on that part. 
Then it says Jessica is three times as old as Albert. So Jessica is 15, Albert is five. 15 is five times three. So we're good to go there. And then half as old as Jamie. 30 is Jamie's age. Again, Jessica is 15. 15 is half of 30. So you're good to go there. So this checks out. Jessica again is 15, Albert is five, and Jamie is 30. All right, let's take a look at one that's a little bit more challenging. So we have that nine years ago, Steve was one third of Larry's current age. The difference between Larry's age and Steve's age is the same as Max's age 11 years ago. If their combined age is 131 years, how old is Steve, Larry, and Max? So we wanna find out how old is Steve, Larry, and again, Max. So I'm gonna jump right in and let a variable like X represent the current age of Larry, okay? So let me go down here. So we have lots of room. So let's let X be equal to Larry's current age. Now, what can we say about Steve? Well, it says specifically that Steve was one third of Larry's current age nine years ago, okay? So I have to think about the fact that one third of Larry's current age is one third X, but this is Steve's age nine years ago. So I've got to add nine on top of that to get back to our present day and time. So for Steve's age, we could say then one third X, so one third of Larry's current age, then plus nine, right? Because this part right here is Steve's age nine years ago. So I've got to add nine to that to get his current age. So this would be Steve's current age. Now let's think about Max now. So it tells us that the difference between Larry's age and Steve's age is the same as Max's age 11 years ago. Okay, so the difference between Larry's current age, which is X, and Steve's current age, which again is this one third X plus nine. Notice that I'm using brackets here because I've got to subtract the whole thing away. This is the same as Max's age 11 years ago. So to get his current age, I've got to add 11 to this amount, okay? So this would be then, we'll say this guy right here, let me just kind of slide this down. We'll say this is Max's current age. Okay, and I might run out of room, so let me make that a little bit better. So Max's current H. Okay, so now it also tells us in the problem that their combined age is 131 years. So essentially, just like I did in the last problem, I can sum the ages and set it to 131, and I'll get a solution. So I would have X, which is Larry's age, plus one third X plus nine, which is Steve's current age, and then plus, you have X minus, you have this inside of brackets, one third X, plus nine, and then plus 11, which again is Max's current age. This is all equal to 131. So let me copy this. We're gonna go down to a fresh sheet of paper. So let me just kind of clean this up. We have X plus one third X plus nine plus X. Use your distributive property here. So you'll have minus one third X, then minus nine, then plus 11, and this equals 131. Now, what do you notice here? One third X minus a third X, that's gone. Nine minus nine, that's gone. X plus X is two X. And then plus 11 equals 131. If I subtract 11 away from each side of the equation, I'm gonna get that two X is equal to 120. Divide both sides of the equation by two. And we're gonna get that X is equal to 60. So remember, X was Larry's current age. So Larry is 60. So Larry is 60. We can say that Steve, again, he's one third times 60, which is 20 plus nine, which is 29. And then for max, we basically have 60 minus 29, which is 31, and then plus 11, which is 42. So his is gonna be 42. All right, let's go back up. So let's write our answer here. Again, Larry is 60. So Larry is 60. Then we can say Steve is 29 and Max 
is 42. Again, we can check this. So it says nine years ago, Steve was one third of Larry's current age. So if we go nine years ago, Larry's current age is 60. So a third of that is 20. Okay, so Steve is 29. Nine years ago, he would have been 20. And that is one third of Larry's current age, which again is 60. Then it says the difference between Larry's age and Steve's age, the difference between 60 and 29 is 31. And it says this is the same as Max's age 11 years ago. Well, again, Max is 42. 11 years ago, he would have been 31. So that checks out as well. Then it says their combined age is 131. Well, 60 plus 29 is 89. Then if I add 42, I do get 131. So everything checks out here. We can say that Larry is 60, Steve is 29, and again, Max is 42. All right, let's take a look at one more. So we have three friends, John, Clyde, and Beth, all attend the local school. The school accepts students from age 5 to age 20. This week, the school set up a fair in which the minimum age is 12 years old to attend. So now we're told in one year, Clyde will be three times as old as John is today. And then one year ago, Beth was one half as old as Clyde is today. If the difference of Clyde's age and John's age is the same as Beth's age in two years, find which of the friends can attend the fair. Okay, so we're trying to find which of the friends, so we have Beth, Clyde, and John can attend the fair. Remember, it tells us that you can only attend the fair if you're at least 12 years old, right? You need to be 12 years old to attend. So we're trying to find out which of these individuals are at least 12, right? Because if you're 12, you can go to the fair. If you're older than 12, you can go to the fair. And if you're less than 12, you can't go to the fair. So let's think about a variable to represent one of their ages. And then we can go through and model the rest of the ages based on that variable. So it tells us that, again, in one year, Clyde will be three times as old as John is today. And it tells us one year ago, Beth was one half as old as Clyde is today. So since Clyde is involved in both comparisons there, let's just go ahead and let X be Clyde's current age. And let's do this on a fresh sheet. So let's let X be equal to Clyde's current age. Okay. So what can we say about John's age? Well, it says in one year, Clyde will be three times as old as John is today. So that means if I take Clyde's current age, which is X, and I add one to it, right, because it's in one year, that amount, X plus one, would be three times the age of John, right? So X plus one, X plus one is three times the age of John. So I can just divide by three to get John's current age. So we can say then x plus one over three is John's current age. Okay, so what can I say about Beth's current age? So if we think about this one year ago, Beth was half as old as Clyde is today. So half of Clyde's age today is one half times, again, Clyde's age is represented with x, so it's one half x. Now, this is Beth's age, not today, but a year ago, okay? A year ago, she was half as old as Clyde. So if I think about one half x, that's Beth's age one year ago. If I add one to that, that's Beth's current age. So we would say that then x over two, which again is her age a year ago, then plus one would be her current age. So this would be Beth's current age. So in most of these problems, you're given a sum, right, of all the ages. But in this case, you're not. You have to use something else to get your equation, and it's this sentence right here. So if the difference of Clyde's age and John's age is the same as Beth's age in two years. So the difference of Clyde's age and John's age would be Clyde's age minus John's age. So let's set that up first. So Clyde's age is x, so this is x, and then minus, John's age is x plus one over three. Now I'm subtracting this whole thing away, so let me just put it in brackets so we don't make a sign mistake. And then we're saying is the same as, so that's equals. Here we're told Beth's age in two years. So her current age is x over two plus one, so x over two plus one, 
in two more years, you would just add another two to this amount. So let's copy this. We're just gonna take it to a fresh sheet of paper and we can solve this guy. So we have X and then you have your minus here. You can distribute this. You can go ahead and set this up as X over three plus one over three. And then if I had a minus out in front of that, then I would have what? I would have X minus X over three and then minus one third, okay? Then this would be equal to, let me just kind of drag this back up. You have your X over two, one plus two is three, so plus three. Now, if I want, I can multiply both sides of the equation by six, right? That would be the LCD. So if I did that, I would have six X minus, if I have six times X over three, the six would cancel with the three and give me a two, so this would be two X, then minus, if I have six times one third, that's two. This equals, if I have x over two times six, again, six divided by two would be three. Three times x is three x, and then plus six times three is 18. Okay, so now here on the left, I have six x minus two x, which is four x, and then minus two equals three x plus 18. Let me scroll down and get some room going. So now I can subtract three x away from each side of the equation. So this is gonna cancel. I can add two to both sides of the equation. This is gonna cancel. Four X minus three X is X and is equal to 18 plus two, which is 20. So X is equal to 20. Now X was Clyde's current age. So he's 20. John's current age was what? It's 20 plus one, which is 21, divided by three, which is seven. Beth's current age is 20 divided by two, which is 10 plus one, which is 11. So it doesn't ask for their ages. It wants us to find out who can attend the fair. So we know that Clyde is the only one that can attend the fair because the minimum age is 12, right? Beth can't go because she's 11 and John can't go because he is seven. So only Clyde can attend. So that's the only information we need to know. It's again, find which of the friends can attend the fair. And once more, you can only attend if you're 12 or older, right? So let's go back down and say that only Clyde can attend the fair. Okay. Now, if we think about this, we can go back and check. So in one year, Clyde will be three times as old as John is today. We said that Clyde was 20. We said John was seven. So in one year, Clyde will be what? He'll be 21, and that is three times as old as John is today because John is seven, so that checks out. Then it says one year ago, Beth was one half as old as Clyde is today. So a year ago, Beth would have been 10 years old, and that is half as old as Clyde is today because he is 20, okay, so that checks out. Then it says if the difference of Clyde's age and John's age. So the difference between 20 and seven Clyde's age and John's age is 13. That is the same as Beth's age in two years. She's currently 11. In two years, she's going to be 13. So that all checks itself out. So our answer here is correct. Only Clyde can attend the fair because, again, he's the only one that's at least 12 years old.